Martin Lindstrom there, talking to me earlier on. Now, China. China remains the world's second largest economy and has accounted for about a quarter of global growth in recent years. But the IMF forecasts that China's growth rate will decelerate this year and may even need to inject a stimulus package into its economy should the euro crisis continue to deteriorate. Now, as far as 2007, Premier Wen Jiabao uh, characterized China's expansion as, quote, unsteady, unbalanced, uncoordinated, and unsustainable. But in Maonomics, why Chinese communists make better capitalists than we do, economic provocateur Loretta Napoleoni argues that we're witnessing the beginning of the collapse of capitalism and the victory of, quote, communism with a profit motive, end quote. She highlights what the West and the rest of the world can learn from China, and she's here right, right now to talk about it. Loretta, let me start with the first question, which is obviously has to be, how do you define your, that word you use in the title, Maonomics? Well, Maonomics uh, is an analysis of the success of the Chinese model, this capi communism or communist with a profit motive. But really, the book is not about China so much as it's about us. Why the Chinese managed to reap all the benefits of globalization, and we, the West, who created globalization, actually are in crisis. Yes, well, I mean, why, why is China so successful then in getting its message across? Because China has an economy that is uh, much more flexible than our economy. I know this sounds uh, crazy because everybody thinks, well, Chinese are communists. But in reality, what China has done is to adapt communism to the needs of global capitalism. Now, we haven't done that. And why haven't we done it? How haven't we done it? What should we have done? Well, because we are very uh, rigid, we are very ideological. Uh, look at the euro crisis, for example. We're approaching this crisis, trying to solve it uh, through the instruments. They actually created the crisis, which is you know, the neoliberal kind of uh, economic doctrine. What we should do is do what the Chinese have done, think outside the box do something extraordinary, something unexpected, uh, in order to reshape our economy. But we're not doing it because we are very entrenched in our ideology. Well, what, what do we need to do? What do we need to change urgently? Well, for example, what is happening in Greece uh, is unacceptable. If a, a union, if a European Union, in order to function, to maintain a common currency, requires uh, the destruction of the economy of one of its members, clearly this union is not working. Now, we should think about this. So perhaps the solution is to produce an alternative system whereby we may have you know, one euro, which is a strong euro, and another one you know, applied in the periphery in order to help the countries in the periphery to catch up with the countries of Northern Europe. But we're not doing that. There are things in the papers today. There's um, a bigger than, expect bigger than expected drop in exports and so on and that's in China and there's slower demand for goods within China and more difficulty in selling some of the goods abroad. So even China ain't perfect. I mean, should we want to copy China? Not politically, probably, because that, mm. that leads away from democracy, but should we try and copy China's economic system? Well, we can't in the West uh, because, of course, you know, the Chinese model works in a developing country. So, I mean, let's not forget China is still a developing country. We are in a post-industrial society, so we got to develop uh, our own model. Now, of course, uh, we see in Africa, we see in Asia, many countries trying to emulate a bit you know, the success, the economic miracle of China. But it's not definitely our case. Now, for what concern the rate of growth of China, of course, is slowing down because we are in a world uh, uh, global recession and of course China will feel the impact but the issue is how strong that impact is going to be in 2007 we've seen a, a decline rate of growth only in the last quarter of you know, the, the year and then after you know China started growing again because of domestic demand and let's not forget there is 1.3 billion Chinese in China that it's a continent, uh, so it's sufficient uh, if the right stimulus are put into the economy, and the Chinese do have enough money to do that, uh, to sustain the economy even if we have uh, a world recession as we are. 
But what about the, the situation in terms of people saying now, um, we see uh, Angela Merkel going to China and other people going, and we're all saying, will you help us out of this crisis? You've got money to spare, money to burn, um, help us out of this crisis. Is there any likelihood that they will? Well, the Chinese have the money to save all yeah, of us. But do they have the will to do it? No, I, absolutely, they're not going to do it. I think you know, they want to help because, you know, of course, a contraction of the economy in Europe will have an impact on China and on the rest of the world. But they will, will not do it until we have a clear policy to get out of this situation. Now, we do not have a clear policy. We don't have a policy for growth. For example, all we have is a policy for austerity, which is actually contracting growth. So until we produce a sort of growth outlook for our economies, the Chinese won't do anything. One other thing I must mention to you is, why is China joining with Russia to bolster this dreadful Syrian regime? Why are China doing that? Is, that, what, is it political, personal, emotional, or I screwy? I think uh, that what the Chinese are doing uh, is maintaining, uh, trying to maintain a certain equilibrium in the Middle East in a moment in which we have major crisis, economic crisis taking place uh, around the world. Now, it's not a political decision in order to back a regime because, you know, another regime would be, you know, worse than this. Uh, absolutely not. I think, you know, they are concerned of the increase uh, of crisis areas in the world. So their decision is, you know, let's keep the situation under control in Syria, which of course is not going to happen like that, uh, in order to wait and see if the other crisis will be resolved. And then they might change their policies, China? They might get firm with Syria? I think uh, that eventually the Chinese uh, will understand that this policy is wrong. Now, let's not forget that this is a year of change in leadership in China. So we're witnessing the last months of a regime uh, w which will go away in the fall. So this is a very delicate moment for China to make major decisions. Uh, that also you know, has an impact on the way uh, they're acting towards Syria. Thank you so much indeed, Loretta. We'll follow this, follow this saga. Probably the China saga will dominate world headlines for the next 30 years, probably. I think so. And we'll watch it all that way through for 30 years. Thank you very much indeed, Thank Loretta. You. Well, that's it for this week, but uh, my thanks to all of my guests, of course. Uh, Dominique de Villepin, Emily Sandé, and of course, Loretta Napoleoni here. Um, next week, we'll uh, once again have an array of fascinating guests. Of course, uh, they'll include the renowned economist, the incredibly wise economist, Paul Krugman, who will have ideas not just about what the situation is now, but where it's going. And then we've got the man who's hoping to enlarge the European Union by creating a new independent country. That man is Alex Salmond, and the country in question is Scotland. He wants Scotland to break away from the United Kingdom. That's also on the agenda. Lots more besides. Do join us then, seven days from now, for another Frost Over the World. For now, bye-bye.